Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Police probing double murder in Rockford area. The Elliston Road Criminal Investigations Branch in East Kingston has launched a probe into a double murder at Norman Terrace in Rockford area. The deceased are 29-year-old Colin Dennis, otherwise called Craig, a security officer of Norman Terrace, and 32-year-old Lorenzo Spencer, otherwise called Cash, of Range Crescent. The men were shot and killed by unknown assailants at about 9.55 p.m. President of the Jamaica Association for Private Security Jobs, Ted Lee Gray, is appealing to law enforcement to act swiftly in bringing the perpetrators to justice. He expressed sadness at the passing of the 29-year-old security guard. On behalf of security officers in Jamaica, I want to express our deepest condolences to the friends, family and colleagues of Mr. Colin. Dennis, who lost his life brutally last night. No amount of words can express our feeling currently. We still do not know the full details of his passing, but hopefully the police can bring her closer to this matter and bring his murderers to justice. Seaford High School teachers say concerns about principal's dismissal still not addressed. Teachers attached to Seaford High School in St. Thomas are refuting claims by the board chairman, Dean Jones, that the concerns and questions regarding dismissal of Principal Colbert Thomas has been addressed. The teachers staged a protest last week in the Seaford Square to press the school's board to provide answers on the reason for the separation. Thomas and the school's board were sent on leave pending the outcome of a probe into allegations of financial irregularities at the institution. Following the proof, the education minister determined that there was no evidence of malfeasances. The burst was subsequently reinstated, however, the principal was not recalled. This did not go over well with the teachers, who say they have been demanding answers for the decision to part ways with the principal leading to the protest. In a release following the protest, the board chairman said, through two forms of communication, the staff was provided with answers to questions and concerns regarding the dismissal of Mr. Thomas to abbreviate the demonstration. The teachers have described this statement as false. They say the two responses neither answer the questions and concerns of the teachers nor facilitate discussion on the attendance issues. The teachers say the communication raised more questions than were answered. In a release, the concerned teachers and stakeholders say they have lost confidence in the board chair particularly in light of pronouncements reportedly made by him in relation to the continued engagement of teachers who participated in the protests. They are now calling for the intervention of Education Minister Favor Williams and Prime Minister Andrew Holness, as they do not believe the justice is being dispensed in the matter. J.T. A. Harrison, hopeful salary issues will be resolved soon. Outgoing President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, J.T.A., Los Angeles Harrison, says several public school teachers continue to have challenges with the salaries paid to them by the Ministry of Finance and Public Service. However, she is hopeful that the issue will be addressed soon. It is still a work in progress. There are still teachers who have some concerns about what they received. Their salaries still move each month a different figure. In our technical meeting, they did say that perhaps by December, we should see some sampling off of the same and for normalcy to return to the pay stub in a systematic way, she told journalists during the first of the three days JTA 59th annual conference in Negril on Monday. Earlier this year, there were complaints that several teachers were yet to receive their salaries, while others were yet to receive their correct pay under the new agreed wages and retroactive payments hampered out during the government compensation review process. On Monday, Harrison encouraged teachers who are still facing challenges to get in touch with the leadership of the 25,000 member strong union. I encourage my colleagues always to go to your regional offices, make the necessary inquiries, and where they continue to experience challenges, they come to us, their unions, so we can do further checks and balances to do our necessary interventions through the work of our liaison officers and regional officers using our power through the association, stated Harrison. She is to hand over the button to President-elect Leighton Johnson during an investor ceremony on Monday. PNP calls for government to reconsider AMC complex divestment. The opposition People's National Party PNP is strongly urging the government to rethink the divestment 
of the Agricultural Market Corporation AMC complex in Kingston. In a letter dated August 17, tenants were advised that the divestment process has started and the government is conducting the necessary due diligence to identify an appropriate modality for divestment, after which an investor will be identified through a transparent competitive process. The process is due for completion by the first quarter of next year. President of the Jamaica Agricultural Society, Lenward Fulton, has spoken out against the move. The PNP says it is also greatly concerned. It argued that the facility within the complex have the decade support farmers through investor holding, both ambient and cold, sorting, grading, inspection, and packaging of particular export crops and serve as a distribution hub for farmers produce, supplying hotels, hospitals, and large horses outlet. The PNP says it is concerned that with post-harvest losses climbing as high as 40% for each crop, the government deem it appropriate to divest itself from the very facility whose services reduce post-harvest losses. Of equal concern is the loss of the facility that supports exports, it added. The PNP is contending that the move runs counter to the government's stated intention of the place greater emphasis on the variabilities that facility export. That's why it wants the government to reconsider the move. In fact, we advance the position that more agricultural complexes that offer appropriate storage, an efficient and responsible distribution system, and sorting and grading facilities should be built by the government. We believe that this will stimulate the agricultural production and remove the bad experiences of cut and scarcity, reduce excessive produce assembly costs, lower high school sale and retail margin, and temper high seasonal and geographical variation in prices. We are of the view that any attempt to divest such an important national asset should be done based on consultation with the farmers, with all stakeholder groups, exporters to be included, to find out whether or not this is the most viable option going forward. In fact, what we have picked up from our meetings with the various farmers groups across Jamaica is that we need more AMC type export complexes closer to farm gate. So this is not the time for us to be focusing on divesting. This is now the time for us to be focusing on reinvesting and bringing these complexes closer to the farmers. As far as we are concerned as an opposition, we are very suspicious of the motives for such a move at this time. We are also very careful in how we are assessing the situation because we can't continue to be selling off our national assets to the detriment of our people. We need to ensure that at some point in time, at some stage, the government and the Ministry of Agriculture has a vested interest in the industry and it is not just left to the private interest to determine the outcome of the plight of our farmers. We have to protect our farmers and to open the process to make it more transparent. There should be a public invitation if they are going to go forward to ensure that there is some transparency and some accountability. We can digest the assets of the people without consulting the people. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell.